the club, the logo, uh, the understanding that we have with our supporters and the community. Uh, that's what everybody has to serve. Uh, every single person from, you know, uh, the receptionist, the chefs out at the training ground, the kit man, the people that are selling tickets, uh, everybody has to be on the same page. Everybody has to recognize that their worth is measured by what they do for the, for the greater good, what they do for the group, for the organization, uh, for the idea of TFC. Kevin, the All for One documentary that was on TSN as well as Sportsnet is actually going to be online on iTunes shortly. Can you talk a little bit about that process of going through the All for One documentary where you're being shot and uh, asked a lot of questions throughout the whole combine as well as the draft and uh, there's that one funny moment where you're in a meeting with one of the prospects and the phone came on and you had some trouble going out to your balcony. Things like that are pretty candid and you gave us an insight into how the club runs. Talk to me a little bit about how you think about the role of a forward uh, in kind of initiating the defending. Yeah. I can't remember what the call was about but it was an annoying subject. I didn't want to uh, uh, I didn't really want to deal with it then, but the person on the other end was insistent. When I was trying to open the door, it just it, it was just spinning. The lock was just spinning. It wasn't catching. I was pretty preoccupied on what it, with what I was doing. I didn't realize until I came back over that the guys had had a good laugh at that. Obviously, the interviews don't go well. <laughs> when the president tries to throw himself off the ledge, it's not a good start. It's, it's, not, it's not all your fault, though, is it? It was an interesting experience because. Uh, they were with us so much that we actually got to the point where we forgot they were there. Um, there wasn't any posing for the camera. Um, and in that particular instance, I got a phone call. It actually had to do with uh, us hiring Pat Onstad. And uh, it was uh, Pat's agent, who's a, an old friend of mine and a guy I've dealt with for years, but I, I didn't really want to talk with him right then because we were in the middle of interviewing a potential first round draft choice and uh, he was insistent and I was getting impatient and annoyed and when I tried to walk out onto the uh, the balcony I couldn't get the door open I couldn't figure out how the door opened and uh, so I didn't realize actually uh, I was pretty engrossed in in the call I didn't realize uh, all the banter that was going on behind me which uh, is something that's pretty emblematic of our our group we have a lot of laughs together uh, you know, we feel some pain together, but it's a group that gets along very well and nothing is sacred. We have a question from Gabor uh, with SKP. Is the club committed to staying with what they have started uh, this year? We brought in a lot of good young talent and some good vets at the outset of the season. Yeah, we want to build uh, with a, we want to build a core group of young talent that we can keep together for a number of years. We want the basis of that to be North American. Um, whenever possible, we'd like it to be Canadian. Uh, but we, we also understand that we have to also find talent from outside the league, outside the country, outside the continent. Uh, and we are doing that and we will continue to do that. Our focus this summer is on adding uh, a couple of uh, impactful players in the attacking end of the field. Um, hopefully one veteran and one young. Uh, and they will not be in all likelihood American or Canadian. Um, so we need some leadership. We need people who've been through wars before. Uh, but I'm hoping to put together a group of 15 or so players that we can keep together for a number of years. I think that's the key to success in our league. You have to have the right kind of talent, obviously. Um, but even some teams that maybe are not brimming with talent but have been able to achieve a level of consistency um, have a lot of success. You mentioned uh, some good young Canadian players when available. Uh, one very good one that came along was Jonathan Osorio. You drafted a couple of others in Kyle Becker and Emery Welshman. Uh, what do you see the upside with these guys? Could they be part of this club for a very long time to come? Now this is the story all about how I turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute and just sit right there and tell you how I came to the prince of a town called Bel Air. Uh, it's like a tradition, I suppose, and it's, it's good icebreaker, but the young lads, the rookies sort of in the team, first years, had to answer a few questions for us and then sing a song and entertain us. About a thing. Because every little thing is going to be all right. 
for uh, Emery, uh, it's been challenging for him because the level is a lot higher than what he was accustomed to in college. Um, but he's such a good athlete and such a willing learner. I think that he's going to do very well. Um, Kyle plays a, a position that's that's difficult in our league. You know, some people look at uh, certain players that have come into the league uh, through the draft that have done uh, have gotten more playing time, for instance, than Kyle. But you know, they're playing positions like right back, which is relatively speaking, is probably the simplest position on the field in terms of decision making. Um, when you play in the middle of the park. It's tough, and the, everything happens so much faster than what you're accustomed to. The decision-making, the technical ability has to be quicker. Um, you have to be, become more explosive physically. So Kyle is a guy that we have a lot of belief in. He has some, I, uh, you know, I say the same things I said about him when we drafted him. He has some qualities that you don't see very often in North American players. His, his instincts of how to attack and the angles to attack from uh, are different than a lot of other players. So we think that Kyle's going to be a very good player for us and is going to be part of this team for a long time. And Jonathan Osorio has been a great revelation. Um, the first time I saw him in a training session, I, I, I said, wow, you know, who is that? And the only reason he was in the training session is because uh, uh, we were missing a bunch of players who were off with Canada. So we literally needed bodies to fill out the training session. Uh, Danny Dicchio brought him in because he had been playing with Danny's uh, uh, senior team uh, in the academy and he looked like he'd been a three or four year pro the, the first day on the field and he's really never taken a step backwards. It's pretty remarkable. One foreign young player that Toronto FC did have at the start of the preseason was uh, Joao Plata now heading into the weekend against Real Salt Lake which is now in uh, first place in MLS. Uh, one question came in from Will was why was Plata traded before being given a proper look during preseason? Because his contract was burdensome and and he has been given a proper look. We've competed, I've competed against him for for a number of uh, games and you know we knew Joao pretty well and uh, you know we have our own opinions about Joao and he's ex an exciting young player and we wish him nothing but the best, but uh, his contract had clauses in it that we were very concerned about, and we didn't think it was the best way to spend our money. And with that, we'll take another short break with President and General Manager Kevin Kelly.